Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, May 6th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here we are continuing to monitor our preseason disturbance here in the first week of May. We talked about this area of convection on Monday that should begin to lower pressures in the area and generate a surface trough, and indeed we see that occurring today uh, where we have this elongated area of circulation trying to form east of Florida. There's actually two lobes of lower pressure, one here and one here. But this elongated nature usually means that uh, it's not going to spin up quickly anytime soon. The NHC has upped its two-day probabilities to 60% for subtropical cyclone formation southeast of the U.S. coast, and this will be moving north slowly over the next couple of days. But what we can see already happening is that there is some subtropical characteristics beginning to show up with this system. Originally, it was a fully non-tropical system along a frontal zone that has pushed north. You can see it here. This uh, large cloud mass of stratus is a really kind of a warm frontal type feature where we have cooler air to the north and uh, very warm, moist tropical air surging from the south where the waters are very warm in the Bahamas. And uh, this is generating what is essentially a warm front here. And uh, the result of this is that this particular area of spin right here is probably more associated with the divergence caused by all of the warm frontal stuff than anything else. And the only real tropical part to this system is actually this piece back here where the convection is not associated with the warm front. You can see it's kind of detached away from this zone. And this is what we look for, is for a piece like this to hang back and then try to develop via more tropical processes via the warm water aiding the thunderstorms instead of relying on the temperature gradient up here, which will not result in a tropical cyclone to form. But because this does exist up here, this frontal piece, uh, this is again elongated and this part up here is stealing some of the convergence or piling up of air from the part down here. So it is unable to strengthen right now. Uh, but what should happen over the next day or so is that the cool air mass up here is supposed to moderate and slide off to the east as the surface high pressure to the north moves off to the east. And this whole warm front will push north and east and then out of the picture and decay over the next couple of days. So by tomorrow and Friday, you're going to see a lot less clouds in this area in general. There will be fewer clouds overall, but what will be left behind is likely this piece moving up and merging with what's over here, and we get a more singular circular area of low pressure with a few thunderstorms around it and perhaps some broad bands far away from the center, but it will probably start becoming more circular looking and the reason for that is we look at the water vapor imagery we can see the upper level pattern again this is all being driven by this upper level trough negatively tilted here over the southeast US and you can see the flow coming around and note how it's bending now back toward the west and north before coming out so you get this upper level outflow in an anticyclonic fashion out of this area of low pressure trying to develop at the surface and that's what these upper troughs do is they allow this pattern to cause convection to wrap around the west side and we see this comma shape to the cloud pattern now that we talked about on Monday beginning to develop and it's this part of the comma here that we have to watch for some kind of subtropical or tropical type formation if it remains over the warm Gulf Stream. Now this upper level trough is gradually merging with this area and so the wind shear is lowering greatly. Wind shear is as low as 10 knots in the northern Bahamas right now. It's much higher at about 50 knots up here. So you can clearly see that this is the area where any kind of tropical development is more likely is when this merges with the trough and the winds become lighter aloft and allow convection to fester over the warm water. Now there are some problems for this system going forward and one of them is the dry air that's present around the circulation. It might not be evident just by looking at the satellite picture, but if we take a sounding out of Charleston, South Carolina right here and look at the 12Z sounding from this morning, we see that the dew point profile on the left and the temperature profile on the right are very largely separated over a great depth of the lower and mid troposphere and this indicates very dry air in the mid levels and this is going to be wrapping into the circulation as it develops over the coming days and this will likely limit how quickly this can begin to spin up. The other thing that's going to be an issue is whether or not this is able to stay over the warm Gulf Stream. If we look at the satellite derived sea surface temperature map, we can see the warm Gulf Stream in orange colors here, but it's a very thin tongue 
of warm water. And you notice that these shelf waters right near the coast, within 100 kilometers or so of the coast, very much colder, down as cold as 20 degrees Celsius. You really want these waters up around 26 degrees Celsius to guarantee yourself that tropical convection can sustain itself. But, uh, you know, that's only found really in the Gulf Stream here. And you can get away with some of the stuff over here, but the, the indications are that the system is going to be moving up closer to the South Carolina and North Carolina coast. And if it ends up getting stuck over the colder shelf water, it will have trouble developing. But if it can remain stalled out over the Gulf Stream like it is now, then it will have a better shot. The model tracks right now for this system, this is now an Invest 90L, so we start running hurricane models on it. And in general, you see it drifting north, and by day three or four, it's a short distance to travel, but during the course of three or four days, it may not be until the weekend or even early next week that this actually makes it ashore. But you can see the models generally take it towards South Carolina, uh, stall it out in here, and then maybe drift northeast eventually as that blocking ridge to the north begins to move a little bit off toward the northeast and allow this to finally recurve out. But again, with so much time to sit in this area, that's why the concern is there for this to, to eventually organize into something a little bit uh, more concerning. But right now, the main threat from this is going to be wet weather along the coastline. And especially because of how slow this track is, you see how it comes right into the coast and then meanders near the coast on some of these models. That could bring a lot of rainfall into areas in South Carolina, Georgia, and North Carolina, especially near the coastlines. And that will likely be the primary concern with this system. Right now, it's hard to say without a clear center of circulation yet formed and consolidated whether this could become some of a somewhat of a wind threat as well as a rain threat during the coming days. But if it still uh, is sitting on the Gulf Stream by Friday and Saturday, it's going to have the kind of time necessary uh, to perhaps become a more organized system. But for now, mostly a wet and breezy weather maker for the southeast going into this weekend. So just keep an eye on it and keep posted at the NHC Tropical Weather Outlooks to keep track of its chances of formation. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.